driver just blasted out of the pilot, ran a red light. Oh, that's no real big surprise. Well, don't give a shit, motherfucker. You go fuck yourself. Well, you should give a shit. Red light means fucking stop. I didn't, did I? You so sue me. How could you miss it? It's three big fucking lights. I don't give a fuck. You dumbass. Don't give a fuck. You should give a fuck. What happens if you fucking T-bone somebody, you dumb fuck? He's a bitch. Cow had to me. He's in a JB Hunt truck. You motherfuckers are gonna do anything. Rambo. I ain't playing Rambo. You're more than welcome to come on up here. Hell yeah, boy. You run your mouth. You're funny. I'll go the other fucking way, you fucking douchebag. It's okay. It's a small world. Our pass will cross one day. Yeah, one thing you'll never see a radio technician do is a clean at close range video demonstrating. But then again, there's, you know, the myth that radios don't sound good up close. Well, most of them are all distorted up close. Or is that truck driving school? I didn't even know they had one back here. Yeah, it's all the way in the back there. It's Smith and Solomon. What's it called? Swift Driving School? Nah, it's called Smith and Solomon Truck Driving School. I thought it was Swift. Well, guess what? It's not. Try talking. Talk, talk, talk. Yeah, it sounds crystal clear. Yeah, save my man. That's not too bad from... Five feet away, ten feet away. Yeah, about that shit. So did you learn a valuable lesson from all of this? Going to three different radio technicians? Yeah, I'd say so. So if you had to recommend Roadstar Communications, what would you what what would you recommend? Well, I mean if you really wanted to take four hundred bucks and burn it, you just throw it right in the garbage can. Well, what about what about Bob's audio? Well, I mean depends on the day, I guess. You know, he seems like he's a bad on Monday, good on Friday type guy, but you know, if you want quality and uh reliability no matter what, then he's not the guy. And who worked on that radio and tuned it this this last time? That'd be a fine-tuned CB shop. Yeah, some nice crystal clear studio quality audio you got going on. Yeah, can anybody tell me how this radio sounded? And not as good as the other guys who worked on it. Yeah, uh, some guy down in Baltimore. You don't remember the name of the shop, do you? No, no, I don't. It wasn't R and R Communications, was it? I don't think so. Somewhere down there by Dundalk. Is that a private shop down there? He said by Dundalk, Maryland, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know of any radio shop down there other than R&R &R Communications. I think that's in Delaware, though, ain't it? Uh, wasn't that far? There's a guy down at Dundalk at Easy Money, but I don't know if he does any radio work. Say so. What about that? I didn't notice any difference. What about now? You got rid.
rid of the echo, but you don't have the fidelity. Okay. How's that? Has anybody been inside that radio? Uh, I'm trying to tune this thing out and see what it's what. I, I don't know if it's, uh, Has that radio been tampered with? Yeah, they said it has, but uh, I don't know. That's probably the problem right there. You got rid of the echo, and now you just need to get some fidelity going on. It's kind of, I don't know, muffled or scratchy sounding. How about that? That didn't really do much. How about that? Why don't you throw your two cents in, Mark? Well, it definitely sounds better than it did without the echo, but could use to be cleaned up a little bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't want to be accused of being biased or anything. Oh, come on, man. These are real, real truck drivers. We ain't children. Yeah, but you know, one man's... One man, one guy will tell you it sounds good, and another guy will tell you it sounds bad, and then you're scratching your head wondering what the re, what, what's reality, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know how that goes. That's every day out here. Yeah. Those people are assholes no matter what. Yeah, so true, so true. You know, when somebody tells you it sounds good, their their idea of good might not be the same idea of good that I got going on inside my head. <laughs> Tell me about that. I appreciate it, my man. It's understandable. I mean, you know, I can hear you fine over here at the Petro. Yeah, I'm sitting back here by the school trucks. And we're not that far apart, then. Yeah, I'm, I'm only going to be here a couple of hours, then I got to roll. Mark, you want me to jump in there and talk on it and then let you listen on this? It don't matter. I just thought it'd be interesting to, because you know how some, some of these idiots are saying that they, they don't like my audio, but it's just my voice, you know what I mean? Well, they're just assholes to begin with. Well, you know, good, I like the way you sound, and just tell them to put a knuckle in it and give them a peanut. Sounds exactly the same. Oh, good deal. I think your your RF game might be a little on the high side, but I can't quite tell. Yeah, I had it said it was uh, about three quarters away open. But no, nah, it sounds good. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, if you want, it's the from the mic over. Um, first one's volume is 12, second one over is the uh, RF gain, it's the outer knob. Try talking again. How's that now? Yeah, that sounds real good. Yeah, it sounds just the same as it does in here. So here we have an over the air line level recording at 10 feet away should be crystal clear with no distortion at close range over the airwaves. Yep, 100%.
out the lot, losers. Don't line us. I wouldn't kick one out. I bet you you like the big, the big fat ones, don't you? Yeah, they don't cost as much. You get more for your money. That's right. I like the ones that are about ready to die, because that means the second hour is free. That's pretty funny. Hey Mark, if you ended up buying a, like a lathe and a mill, you could set up a little machine shop where you can make those antennas. much work that goes into it it's it's really I mean you'd have to charge a lot to just to make it worthwhile yeah, you start charging all your you know 100 bucks 120 bucks for an antenna and nobody wants to buy them and 120 dollars really wouldn't cover your time and and all the work that went into making it very true you'd have to sell you know 30 or 40 of them before you even made a profit Plus stainless steel, it's really, it's real hard to, hard, a lot harder to machine than cheap aluminum. What I'll probably end up doing though is just, uh, I'll send my spare down to Chris and see if he can do anything, make copies of it, make parts. I'd rather just pay him to do it, it'd be easier. I actually have individual parts, so I could actually give you a set of parts to send to him to replicate. That would work. That way you don't have to have them disassemble the perfectly good antenna. Yeah, that would work. You just send them down to them and have them make a dozen of each or whatever. Yeah, those NRO guys are going to get pissed when they hear that, that audio, how it sounds up close. I'm pretty sure they wake up in the morning pissed. Yeah, that Michael Houston guy, I told him, I said, why don't you do this? Show him. Make us a recording over the airwaves at close range so we can hear what your work sounds like. Yeah, I don't think he, he he's not too keen on the idea. No, none of them will do it because they're afraid to back their shit up. Even the reputable guys don't want to do it. I don't understand that. Well, I used to work in a machine shop, and let me tell you, just the, just the tooling to be able to turn down stainless steel is expensive. Yes, it is. That's the best way to tell if you're getting your money's worth or not. You got that right. As we found out plenty of times in the past, you don't really know what your radio sounds like until you can hear it on the other end. Yeah, there's not too many people out there that know how to do their own radio checks. Like that Alan Ward guy. <laughs> He's probably got some buddy out in the distance. You know, I'm just saying it sounds good, but his customers really have no idea what what it sounds like because he won't show them. Oh, we found out what they sound like. Yeah, I never even heard of the guy until I heard heard you on the radio that one time. But of course, he goes back to blaming you know his user error or whatever it may be. Yeah. Well, I bought a Connex down there in North Carolina. The guy swore up and down it was a, uh, it been peaked and tuned, and he really screwed me on that. So I come to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, got a hold of that guy, got one, uh, same Connex that he had peaked and tuned, and man, oh man, could I tell the difference. Oh, you had a radio done in Carlisle? Yeah, yeah uh, I had it, uh, Trout in North Carolina is where I had it done first, but uh, the guy in Carlisle said, it's, that, that radio has never been picked or tuned, so he fixed it for me, and uh, I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Was it DTB Radio that did it? Uh, they just called him the CB man, he's right there uh, on, on Route 11, right there uh, at the Petro. Oh, okay, yeah, that one sounds good.
Yeah, I mean, I couldn't get out. Everybody was hollering at me, turn up your mic game, and my mic game was all the way open. And as soon as he looked at my radio, he told me, your radio has not been picked and tuned. So next time I get down to Troutman, I'm going to confront that fellow. They call him Jack War Joe. But uh, he's supposed to have a good reputation, but he sure ripped me off. Sometimes a stock radio will outperform, uh, you know, one that's been peaked and tuned by someone that didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, this guy here, I had faith in him because he, uh, he works on ham radios, all, a lot of different kind of radios, and he's got a shop full of them, but uh, I, I should have knew it wasn't peaked and tuned whenever, uh, when he sold it to him, he just pulled it straight out of the box, but I just can't stand my line to him. He, he, you know, it cost me over $400. Radio industry is full of people that like to lie and steal your money. Yeah, but this, this, this guy in Carlisle, I actually got faith in him. Well, it's even full of a lot of people that like to uh, think that they're doing a good job because they don't know any better just because they've been doing it for 30 years. They think they're doing it right. Yeah, I mean, this guy's in it just for the money, I'm sure, but I did buy an antenna from him, and, and the CB man there in Carlisle uh, told me, he said, now, you've got a good antenna there. He said, that radio, he, he picked and tuned it for me, and man, it, it, it was the difference between black and white there. Mark, I got a hard drive on the phone. He wants to know how your radio's doing. Wonderful. Tell him I didn't forget about him. I'll get that other one out to him this weekend. They just got tied up with all kinds of other bullshit over the weekend, this last one. Mark said he truly hopes that you enjoy your radio. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, Mark's kind of eager to hear this. I'm sure he'll like it. Yeah, Mark said he did something totally different on this radio and something totally different on your radio, so he's eager to hear how it sounds at close range. I think he'll be uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the NRO guys are going to get pissed off. back to the house. I think we proved enough. Oh, shit. Whatever. Mark said thanks for participating in the demonstration. Do I get a trophy? Oh, I'll ask him. He said you have your trophy. <laughs> Alright, that works. Your trophy is bolted up over your head of your windshield. Something that your trophy is something that Michael Houston is incapable of giving you. But according to him, though, he does so much better work. Yeah, if you got it, they use that power strip. I'd like to borrow it. Anyway, I'm going to head to the house. I think we did enough. Yeah, I'd say so. About time for me to go head to the shower. All right, have fun. <laughs>